Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. IP addresses have classes. You've already probably heard me say a class C address or a class B address. Well, what defines the class that the address is in is the first octet. And the first octet is going to be, for example, the number 10. This is the first octet, then a dot, then number 2 is the second octet, then a dot, 100 is the third octet, dot, and then 5 is the fourth octet. So there's four octets in an IP address, an IP address, an IP version 4 address, which has 32 bits, and an octet is 8 bits. So this 10, this number 10, is actually 8 bits. This number 2 is actually 8 bits. That's why it's called an octet. But for classes, we're concerned with the first octet. So class A is 0 through 127. So, for example, this number 10 is in between 0 and 127, so this is a class A address. Class B is 128 through 191. Class C is 192 through 223. Class D is 224 through 239. Class E is 240 through 255. So let's just go through these IP addresses here and take a look at what class they're in. So we already know this IP address 10.2.100.5 is a class A address. What about 180.5.6.7? Well, that's in between 128 and 191. So that's a class B address. 166.5.7.200. 166 is also a class B address because it's between 128 and 191. What about 222.5.7.8? Well, that is in between 192 and 223. The first octet is the 222. So that's a class C address. And then finally, 230.7.8.100. We can see that is a class D address because 230 is between 224 and 239. So we have to have these class ranges memorized. And when we get into subnetting, we'll actually see how they came up with these ranges. Basically, it has to do with the first bits in the first octet. If the first bit is a 0, then it's a class A IP address. If the first two bits are a 1 and a 0, then it's a class B address. If the first two bits are 1 and 1, then it's a class C address. I'm sorry, very class C address is actually 110. And as we'll see, class A, class B, and class C really are the important IP addresses that we need to know. We do need to know class D and E, but they're used much more rarely, especially class E. Because class D is used for multicast address, and class E is used for strictly for research. So those are reserved. So why create IP address classes? Well, this creates a hierarchical IP addressing scheme which allows for efficient routing. As we'll see in a routing table, we can say that uh, any IP address that starts with, let's say, 10.2 should get routed out a certain interface. That's because of this hierarchical addressing scheme. If we didn't have it, we would have to have a routing entry for every single IP address. And here's why. So for our class A addresses, the first eight bits are going to be your network. So that's the first octet. Then the next three octets are your host bits. This is also called your network address and your host or node address. So every host in a network is going to have the same network address but every host in a network is going to have a unique host part of the address. So let's take this class A address here. We can see that the first eight bits are going to be our network address. So that's a 10. And then the rest, the 2.100.5, is going to be our host, our node address. For our class B addresses, we can see the first two octets are our network address, and then the next two octets are going to be our host address. And for class C, the first three octets are our network address, and then the last one is the host address. So let's try our class B address. Which part of this address is going to be the network address? Well, it's going to be the 180.5, 
and then the 6.7 is going to be your host address. With this class B address, the 166.5 is going to be our network address. The 7.200 is going to be our host address. Now what about with this class C address? Well, the 222.5.7 is the network address, and then just the 8 is the host address. So this may be a little confusing right now, but the things to take away are our class A, B, C, D, and E IP address ranges. And also, for a class A address, which part of the address is the network address and which part is the host address, same with class B and class C. That's what we want to take away from this. Then when we get into subnetting, it, it's all going to become clear.